Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever the case may be. We are back in better than ever, and we are going to finish up Polynomial Theorems with Part 3. So let's get right to it, shall we? Okay. And we have the sum and product of roots theorem. Um, so from a quadratic equation, we have seen that the sum of the roots is negative b over a, and the product of the roots is c over that c over a, and that was proven long ago. So we have something similar with any polynomial equation, and it says um, for any polynomial a sub n x to the n plus a sub n minus one x to the n minus one all the way down to a sub zero the constant, the sum of the roots is negative a sub n minus 1, so the second coefficient negated divided by the first coefficient, and the product is of the roots is negative 1 to the n power times the constant a sub 0 divided by a sub n. Okay, And there's a proof here. Uh, you can pause and take a look at it if you'd like. Uh, just a couple of examples here. It says find the sum and product of the roots. Okay, so excuse me, the sum is given by again negative a n minus one over a sub n. Um, so that would be the second, the coefficient of the second term. So um, that would be negative negative seven all over the first uh, coefficient two. I said term instead of coefficient here. So that would be seven halves. And the product is given by uh, negative one to the n power times a sub zero, the constant, all over a sub n. So this is gonna be negative one cubed because um, it's, a, it's a cubic. Um, and all we need to know there is that's going to be negative times a sub zero, which is another negative one, all over uh, the first term, which is two. And so a negative times a negative is a positive. Okay. And the final example looks terrible, but it's not all that terrible if we know our um, sum and product of roots. So we have a real polynomial here. Look at the C and the D and the E. The graph of Y equals P of X has Y intercept of 180. So I'm gonna, right away, I'm gonna say, I know the point 0, 180 is on there, uh, that it intersects that. And if you think about it, um, why don't we just go ahead and say it? That has to be our constant. Because if x equals 0, what's left is e, so e is equal to 180. Look at that. Look how much we've done already. It cuts the x-axis at 2 and 6, so I already have two roots, um, x minus 2 and x minus 6, wowzers, and does not meet the x-axis anywhere else. So I'm going to have some... Um, uh, complex solutions. Suppose the other two zeros are, uh-oh, n plus n, plus or minus n i, where n is greater than zero. Use the sum and product formula to find m and n. All right, so, all right, so the sum of the roots, just the roots, are 2 plus 6 plus m plus n i plus m minus n i, and we know from back here that it's also equal to negative a sub n minus 1 over a sub n, so the coefficient um, uh, of the second term, negative, negative 12, over the first term, which is equal to 3. So if we clean all of this up, we get 2m plus 8, because the ni's cancel out, right, bam, bam, is equal to 4, and voila, we get m is equal to negative 2. This is good news. 
So the product of the roots, and if we do all of the roots, 2 times 6 times uh, m plus ni times m minus ni, we know again from the sum and product theorem that it's equal to negative 1 to the n times a sub 0 over a sub n. So that's going to be negative 1 to the fourth power, so we don't have to worry about it because it's positive, times the constant over the coefficient of the first term, um, a sub n, so that's over 3. And if we qu uh, clean all this up, we get 12, 2 times 6 is 12, times, well we know m is negative 2, so that's negative 2 plus ni, times negative 2 minus ni, and this turns out to be equal to 60. Okay, so we have um, a plus b times a minus b, and they're complex conjugates, so that's going to be 12 times 4 plus n squared is equal to 60. 4 plus n squared is equal to 5 n squared equals 1, let me move over here, n equals plus or minus 1, but it tells us here that n is greater than 0, so we know that n is equal to 1. So, we found m and n, m is equal to uh, negative 2, and n is equal to 1. Wowzers, that is a whole lot of stuff. Now, I, um, we didn't end up multiplying here, but I, I just wanted uh, to point out that, of course, if 2 and 6 cut the x-axis, factors of the polynomial are x minus 2 and x minus 6. And with that, we're finally done. I know I enjoyed it. I'm sure you did, too. I am... Oh!